I'm sorry that I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Oh, I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught. Jesus, you don't owe me anything, and more than anything that you can do, I just want you. Oh, I just want you, and nothing else, nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. I just wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this whole moment. I never wanna leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus. You don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want you Strong, try to make them all think I'm strong. Yeah, the face I keep pulling on says I ain't tired, but these tears stained eyes ain't lying. Cause hard 
Good morning. Wow. <laughs> that sounds um that sounds loud. That's okay. Well, good morning folks. Welcome to Crossroads Christian Church. It's time for us to start. And uh praise God, we get to be here in the house of the Lord with the family of God. And even though it's raining and it may be a little bit wild out, we get to be together today. 
So praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Um, if you would all stand, please. We'd like to open with a bit of prayer and some worship. Father God, I just want to come before you and ask that you would help us to get our hearts, our minds um, all right before you, Lord, realizing that we are coming before the Almighty God that's the King of the universe, that all things are in your hands, God, there's nothing above you, and we get the awesome privilege to be called sons and daughters of God. We get to be part of this family, this great family, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, let's just come before you and offer ourselves to you this morning in praise and worship. Help us to be open to hear your word and to be encouraged and also corrected and changed and conformed by your word, Lord. So we pray all these things in Jesus' name and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. The weapon is fashioned against us shall stand. Belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. Darkness comes in like a flood. Battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of His blood. Battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength. in heart, do not fear, the battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near, the battle belongs to the Lord.
your heart in the streams of life Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away In the waves of his mercy As deep cries out to deep We sing come Lord Jesus come Come Lord Jesus come All who are thirsty All who are thirsty got this ear monitor which kind of like brings everything that is amplified right here and um, I know you guys can hear the rain on top of this tent and this kind of just makes it just more focused I can hear it and I just I just want to think about it like God's spirit raining down on us and um, as we come here and we gather together and we lift our hearts to him just like this rain is coming down, I just like to think about God's Spirit just coming down and that we would get everything out of the way, everything else out of the way, that we can be filled with that Spirit. Um, so, yeah.
hearts to you come down from above you are everything we need fill us with your love and we love you and we give our Everything you say is true. Search our hearts, Lord, shine your light. Show us what you see. Our sin was laid on you, are our Lord. The price that made us free. We love. Everything you say is true. Let your word flow into us. Light a fire within. Burn away our low desires. Take every trace of sin. We love you. And we give our hearts to you. Yes, we love you. Everything you say is true. Yes, we love you. And we give our hearts to you. Yes, we love you. Everything you say is true. Lord, we bring our hearts to you. Come down from above. All right, this is the time you get to turn to your neighbors and greet each other with the love of the Lord. If I can interrupt for just a minute, we do not have a teacher for Sunday school grades two to five. We have it for first grade and under, but not for the older kids.
declare his praise for who can stop the lord almighty I always hate to start talking before everybody's done fellowshipping, but there is time after service to fellowship. Our hospitality ladies always come through with some wonderful poo-poos. So, and again, if you have children in grades two through five, they are not going to Sunday school today. The kids in first grade and under um, if you haven't already walked through the rain to take them over there, now would be a good time to do that as we pray, saying, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the kids. Thank you for the teachers that have made it here today. Thank you for the parents that brought their kids. Um, thank you for loving us and loving our kids and helping us to get them ready to walk the path that you have designed for them. In your holy name, amen. If you are feeling called, we could use more Sunday school teachers, obviously. Um, so Sandy would love to talk to you about taking on one of the classes, though so you can see her after service today. Next Sunday, the 21st, actually before we get into that, you know, thank you for joining us in our liquid sunshine. Um, and let's take a quick moment and pray for all of those people that have been impacted by the rain. Uh, you know, the, the bridge in Wailua, Smiths, um, all the folks that live in Wailua, Kaloa, there's just been flooding around the island. There's been damage around the island. As far as I'm aware, there hasn't been anybody injured, and I hope that that continues. I know that you have the power to do that, God. So reach out and, and protect those people. Um, you, the first responders are out there doing their best to keep us all safe. The construction crews are working on clearing the bridge so that we can get through it tomorrow morning on our way back to work. Um, and just thank you for being who you are. Thank you for keeping us safe. Wet, but safe. In your holy name, amen. So, um, and with that, next Sunday after service, that's the 21st, we're going to have a, a meeting. We're calling it a ministry leadership meeting, but it's not just for the ministry leaders. It is for the ministry leaders to let everybody know what's going on in their ministry, what kind of help they need, like Sunday school teachers, um, <laughs> and, and how we can help them fulfill their ministries. Also, there are some that we closed down for COVID that we haven't reopened. And if you're interested in taking on a ministry, um, please plan on staying after service next Sunday. We'll give you more information on what's available and what we would love to have reopen. Um, it'll start in the main tent about 1145 so that everybody can do some fellowshipping and, and praying for those that need it. Um, we'll have hamburgers, hot dogs, chips. If you want something different, something healthy, um, you need to bring it, <laughs> but, but we'll take care of junk food for you. Uh, on uh, beginning this Wednesday, April 17th, Casey is restarting or starting a new um, Wednesday Bible study. They're going to, it's at 6 o'clock at Casey's house. There's a sign up on the greeters table, um, and you can get, Casey, get with Casey and get her address. There will be light snacks. They'll meet each week to discuss what God has shown us as we read through Colossians and Philippians. So again, see Casey for details. Sign up at the greeters table. Um, we are, knock on wood, going to have cleanup day on April 27th. We're in the process of renting a bin 
from PCCC. Uh, hope to have it delivered this week if they still have them available and not all taken out for flood recovery. Um, but uh, it'll be starting at 8 a.m. on Saturday, the April 27th. So please plan on coming. You know, as I say, hopefully we'll have a big bin for you to throw trash in, but there's always plenty of cleanup to do without that. So there's more information about Bible studies, volunteer opportunities in our bulletin. Be sure you pick one up. And if the worship team would come back up and the ushers would come forward to gather the tithe. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with us. Um, thank you for protecting the people of the island. Um, I know that there's been some physical damage and, you know, we can, we can come back from that. It's hard whenever it's people. Um, please be with Israel and the people on the Gaza Strip as that continues and escalates. Um, protect your children. Minimize the damage to life and property. Um, help end it quickly if that's your desire. Um, thank you for the many blessings, the grace, the mercy that you provide for us, the financial opportunities that you give us so that we can return to you what you provide. In your holy name, amen. up my eyes to the heavens, cause I know where my help comes from, I will set my mind upon you Jesus, my Savior God's only Son, there is
Father God, I want to just pray real quick uh, for Richmond. Lord, please bless his words. Help him to say just the things that you want, God. And I pray that we would be open to hear. We love you. Again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that weren't here last week, Richmond Chi is here doing a three-week series, um, and this is week two of it, and thank you very much for, for coming and, and spending time with us. Um, Heavenly Father, be with Richmond as he shares your word with us today. Um, make sure that that one person that's here that needs to hear, hears. Um, open their ears, open their heart, let them find you through Richmond's word today, actually your word through Richmond's mouth. Um, thank you so much for putting it on his heart to teach us and people on the island, people on the internet, and be with him, protect him, help him as he helps each and every one of us, as you do too, in your holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Fred. Am I on? You can hear me? Yes? Well, good morning, church. Good to see everybody, all the brave souls today with this, uh, what Fred called, uh, um, what, 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 what did he use just another term? Liquid sunshine, isn't it? Or sky juice. It's a blessing. Well, welcome everyone. We are, we are going down the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. Uh, last week, we just really covered, uh, we covered like two verses, and today we're going to cover a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> it's a great book of wisdom. It's, it is the uh, pinnacle of wisdom. So typically when you begin reading or studying the book of Ecclesiastes, you will go through the book, uh, the, the book of Wisdom, you will go through the book of Psalms and Proverbs, but Ecclesiastes is the pinnacle of wisdom because it really is. Um, when you consider all the writings of Solomon and what's in it, it's just so incredible. And so the goal is really just to gain insights from Solomon from the eight first eight verses of the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm getting a bit of echo here. Maybe, yeah. Uh, um, these eight verses, if you can just really get it down, you can truly understand just eight verses, not even the whole book of Ecclesiastes. It will radically change your life. Truly, I mean, just only eight verses. You've got to get it down. You've got to truly understand it. You will not be doing the crazy stuff that most people are doing with their lives, uh, ruining their lives, wasting a bunch of time. You know, you will be radically changed. That is how deep, how incredible this, this book is. So let's, take, uh, let's read that first eight verses, uh, and the Lord will give you understanding. It says, the words of the preacher, capital P, preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passes away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Uh, verse 5, the son also arises, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. 
All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, men cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear fill with hearing. So, Solomon, we talked about Solomon's qualification last week. Just a quick recap. How incredible it is that we have this privilege to be able to learn from Solomon, to have Solomon as our sensei. I mean, this guy, he was the wisest man ever lived. He was the richest man ever lived. And he was the most powerful king in, in his days. Imagine if you're going to hire somebody like this to be your teacher. Imagine you're going to hire uh, Solomon. I know I can't afford him. Um, even that, if, if a commoner like me, we will never have access to Solomon in his days, right? If you're not a king, you're not a prince in those days, there is no chance you can have access to Solomon. And, and you, you won't be able to afford a meeting with him. But you know, so this capital P preacher we talk about uh, is also doctrinally the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And uh, the privilege of getting the words of wisdom from Solomon and from the Lord Jesus. Think about it. Think about our position today that we have. So we really, really need to pay, to take heed and pay attention to these words. I mean, back in the day, kings and princesses, they would come from far, they would travel from far to visit with Solomon. It is a bragging right. You know, everybody wants to take the selfie with Solomon. Did you know that? Uh, it's, it's incredible bragging rights. And when they return home, they say, guess what I did this week? What? I had lunch with Solomon. Uh, it's like that. I mean, if, imagine if you sit down with the smartest, wisest guy in the world. Uh, <clears throat> and so, um, we need to take heed to his words. And a quick recap what we talked about in four bullet points. That this world is the vanity of vanities. Okay? It is void of satisfaction, it's void of fulfillment, uh, and void of happiness. And the vanity is painful. You can deny it, you can argue with it, but you can feel it. It is extremely painful. It is a burden, it is a pressure on your psyche. Okay? Uh, you, can, you can argue with it all you want, but it is a massive pressure on your psyche. People will take anti-depression drugs over it. We're going to switch you over. Thank you. So to that one. You hear me? Yes? Better? Thank you. I can do that. Um, all right, so the pain of vanity um, is, is just incredible. It drives a lot of people to suicide. It drives a lot of people to depression. It, it, and you can argue with it. Uh, it will be argue, like arguing with the concrete. The concrete says, I'm hard. You say, no, 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 you're not hard. And you slam yourself against the concrete, and the concrete is going to win every time. Vanity of vanities is painful. You can argue. You can slam yourself against it. It will win every time. And humans can't overcome vanity without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? So... If you are not a child of God, vanity of vanities is your deal under the sun. That's all you get. Okay? So enjoy it because that is what you get. You have no way out. Just zip. Zero way out. And also we talk about your happiness is tied to your engagement with the Word of God. 
Your happiness is not in dieting. Your happiness is not, it's not in relationship with another person. Your happiness is not in money or possessions. Your happiness is tied to your engagement with the Word of God. It's not just about reading the Bible. You need to be studying the Bible. That's how God, God has ordained. That's how God has set this thing up. And today's lesson, you're going to see that everything is set up. Everything runs on its own circuit. That's what you're going to, that's for you to take home. Everything runs on its own circuit and that is no way out. You don't believe your happiness is tied to your engagement in the word of God. You can keep living and you'll be dissatisfied and as empty. Okay. How can this be vanity, the vanities of the vanity of vanities? How can this be? You know, I'm talking to um, to uh, tourists. They're like, "Oh, you are so lucky to live in Kauai, so beautiful here." And I tell them, "You know, we have one of the highest suicide rates here." They said, "What? No way! Way? Yeah, you can check it out for yourself. How come?" It's true. And I'll tell them, this place is very dark. And they were like, what? It's like, you no, know, you're not making sense. You will find just about every evil religion and spirit on Kauai. I'm serious. You'll find just about every evil spirit and religion on Kauai. This place is very dark. So on top of the vanity of vanities, you have this, all the evil spirits and religion driving you crazy. What's that not to be depressed? Of course you're depressed. Um, so how can such a beautiful place be the vanity of vanities? You can't be tricked into what you see. You have to be guided by the word of God. God has told you, you know, this, this is, might as well be the ghetto. It's, it is that bad. So, people, is this happiness? I mean, is this happiness? Isn't this what you wake up for every day? You go to work for every day? Isn't this happiness? A grand estate? Sports car, helicopters, all the stuff you can have in the world. Isn't this not happiness? You know, these people who live in this mansion, they live like a king. They eat like a king. They play like a king. The lady of, a, of the house, the wife, has a 10 carat diamond ring on her finger. All kinds of expensive and one of the kind jewelries. She wears designer clothing, a closet full of, of handbags and shoes. You know, ladies, all the MKs, all the Coach, Prada, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Hermes. Bottega, she got them all, closet full. The husband has expensive toys. One sports car, not enough. Two. One helicopter, not enough. Two helicopters. Isn't this happiness? But in this home, they can't sleep. They need ambient. They use antidepressant drugs, including their children. They have mental health issues due to anxiety, depression, and stress. The pressure to maintain and increase wealth is overwhelming. They're never satisfied. They want to keep more and more and more. The eyes are never satisfied. They're addicted to painkillers because they are so the pressure is so painful and they have marital problems because they don't have time for each other and they're depressed and unsatisfied. No, you know, 
this is not against wealth. If you have one of these, call me up. Send your helicopters to get me. We'll do Bible study at your place. Right? If you can afford one of those homes in Kukui Ula, hey, let's have Bible study and party at your place, right? So this is not against wealth. You have, you have this, great. Let's use it for the Lord. But if you are counting on this to be your happiness, you might want to rethink the whole thing. Have you ever tried to break a piñata? Ever tried hitting a piñata? So you work hard, you, 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 you hit a piñata hoping, all right, hoping to get some sweets, hoping to get some treats. So you work hard, you, you, you're batting this piñata, you hit it and hit it over and over. Um, and when, when it breaks open, it's empty. It's empty. So the world is like this empty piñata where you work hard at trying for something, hoping for something. But when it breaks open, there's nothing in there. Absolutely nothing in there. What, how disappointing, how depressing. What do you get from empty? What do you get from empty? Depre depression, emptiness, unsatisfaction. That's what you get from emptiness. Now Solomon, being the wisest guy ever lived, he fully anticipated nobody is going to believe what he said. He said, this is vanity of vanities, repeated twice, all is vanity. He fully anticipated, like, oh, no way, this is not vanity. I wake up every morning, I want more stuff. So he asked you a question. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? Every morning you get up, every morning you work so hard every day, what do you get from it? What do you get from empty? What is zero multiplied by anything? I told you about a fish tank last week. You know how you, 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 you get a fish tank, you put beautiful colored gravels down, uh, you put some nice little caves for the fish to hide in, you put plants in there and you put lights in there you put water you put fish in there and those fish are like oh it's so beautiful in here but you never put happiness in the tank you don't put satisfaction in the tank you don't put fulfillment in the tank those are outside the tank same with this world we're in this fish tank like oh everything's so beautiful quiet so beautiful you want true happiness and fulfillment it's outside of the tank in Jesus Christ, in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, don't be full. So here we go. One generation passes away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Nothing has changed since the earth became vain. Nothing has changed since the day the earth became vain. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is generational humans so foolish trying, like hitting that piñata, hitting the empty piñata. Every generation repeats the same foolishness. Every generation thinks they are it, that they are the smartest. When there hasn't been anything changed, the earth abideth forever it has been the same so you are batting against something that has not changed vanity of vanities hasn't changed and you think somehow you are smarter somehow you are stronger somehow you're the only person in the world who can change that when generations upon generations upon generations have has come and gone and failed. What makes you so special? What makes you so special? 
every generation betting zero. The earth abideth forever. Nothing's changed. And you think you can make it change against God's will, against God's design. All this is to drive people to wisdom so that you know you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus, Jesus Christ. All this vanity is going to give, inflict so much pain on you so that you are wise enough to say, this place ain't working for me. That the world's not working for me. I need to be looking outside the tank, not inside the tank. You know, the problem is because the world is set in our hearts. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Everything is beautiful. So beautiful. Everywhere you look so beautiful. Also, he has set the world in their heart. That's a problem. Every child has a world in its heart. You have to... Use the Bible, you have to teach the child to remove, to unset that world from, from the child's heart. From the get-go, the world is in their heart. By default, that is the default position. They would love the world. They will not love God. They will not love the words of God. They will love the world. That is just from the get-go. Every child born has the world in his or her heart. And so, Sunday school teachers, Bible teachers, that's our job. It's to communicate the reality. You don't catch that little kid when they were young. You don't teach this kind of wisdom. They're going to be, next thing you know, they're going to be teenagers. Full on. Full on the world in the heart. We need to unset it. How? Colossians 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, okay, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, this is what you need to do. Seek those things which are above, outside of the tank, not inside the tank. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on the things above. On the earth. Pretty straightforward. Now, <clears throat> let me rephrase that for you. If you are not the child of God, you can't do that. It's quite impossible for you to <clears throat> set your affection on things above. Impossible if you're not a child of God. Because this ability... It's only possible if you are risen with Christ. If you are not risen with Christ, this is your deal under the sun. The vanity of vanities is your deal under the sun. Again, you can argue all you want. You can deny it all you want. You'll be arguing with concrete. All right, we're going to jump, we're going to dive in a little bit. The sun also arises, and the sun goeth down and hastes to his place where he arose. Now, people, indulge me for a moment. The sun rises from the, from the east. The sun sets from the, in the West. The next day, the sun rises from the, and the sun sets in the, the next day, the sun rises from the east, and the sun sets in there. There is a circuit that the sun cannot get out of. Have you ever seen the sun rises from the north or south or west? If you say yes, you're delusional. 
There is a circuit that God designed that everything is fixed. As much as the sun said, oh, you know, this is, too, this is too laborious. This is very tiresome. I, I'm sick of doing this thing because every morning I wake up at, at the east and every evening I sat in the west. I'm tired of doing this. I don't want to do this no more. No can. No can. The next morning you are back at square one. You're back at square one. You know, the, the, the one way, the one way circuit from east to west, that represents human life. Human life also runs in the circuit we'll look at just now. Human circuit is from birth to death. It's a one-way street. Humans are locked in our own circuit we cannot get out of. You come into this world through birth, you go out of this world through death. So the sun is the same thing. <clears throat> East to west is a one-way circuit. The sun comes into the world every morning, goes to work from the east, it dies in the west. It's a one-way circuit it cannot get out of. But you know how restless it is for the sun. The sun wakes up in the morning, generates a ton of energy. Oh, look at the, the bright noon sun, how hot it is. And then next thing you know what happens? How quickly it sets. And the verse says, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The restlessness in this world. The son says, I'm so tired of doing this. It's the same thing every day. This is the ultimate groundhog day. I, want to, I don't want to do this anymore. No, you no can't. Haste us. Like now, he has to run back to the east and redo the same old thing. Now, let me ask you. That is just like human nature. That is our deal under the sun. You, you were born so cute, so lovely. Oh, the next thing you know, you are a toddler walking. Oh, next thing you know, you go to grade school. Oh, next thing you know, you are college. Oh, next thing you know, you are married, have kids. And you are in the prime of your days. You are the prime of your days. And next thing you know what happens? You are a setting sun. Realize the sun also arise, comma, there is no mention of the prominent sun. There is no mention of the noonday. You know why? The sun arise, the sun goes down. Well, what happened to the glorious sun? What happened to the noonday sun? What happened to my prominent position? I am in the prime of my days. People, if you are in the prime of your days, please don't blink. The moment you blink, oh, what's this? Gray hair? Oh, what's this? Back pain? Oh, what's this? Hip replacement? Oh, what's this? Knee replacement? Don't blink. If you think you are in a prominent place, to, oh, you're so strong. Oh, you're so smart. You blink, the sun goes down. Life is like that. So quickly you will go down. Don't count on your smartness. Don't count on your own strength. Don't count on your own money, possession, your own wisdom. You think the sun arises, the sun goes, goes down so quickly. That is no place you can hang around for a long time. 
You know, if you can capture the energy, the solar energies that the sun produces every day, theoretically, you could power 3.19 multiplied by 10 to the power of 23 homes. Like, if I could capture the sun, the, the total energy of the sun in one day, I could power 3.19 multiplied by 10 to the power of 23. Now, a million has six zeros, a billion has nine zeros, a trillion has 12 zeros, 23 zeros? I, I, I don't know how to count that far. I can't count that far. That is how much energy the sun can emit every day. But let me ask you this. How much of that energy can the sun pocket? Like, okay, I'm going to store up my energy so that I don't have to work so hard tomorrow. How much of that energy can the sun take away when it sets? Anybody knows? When the sun sets, it takes away nothing. And it has to haste back to the east and start everything all over again from square one. You are not going to take anything away from your life if you are living for self. If you think, oh, I'm so smart, oh, I'm so great, I'm in my prime time, next thing you know, you're going to set like the, like the setting sun. And when you die, what can you take with you? Like the sun, it generates tons and tons of energy every day. And yet, it will take zilch at the end of the day. The next day, you're going to be doing that all over again. The next generation, the next incarnation, you're going to be doing that all over again from square one. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. If you don't live for Jesus Christ, if you don't serve God, do you know your life is such vanity you can't take nothing away? It doesn't matter who you are. Really, it doesn't matter who you are. You are not going to take anything away. Zip. The only way you're going to take something with you is that you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Be in ministry. Do the work of ministry. Then you have something to show when you go up to heaven. I keep telling people all the time, Good news, you'll see Jesus. Bad news, you'll see Jesus. You don't want to show up in heaven empty-handed. Because why? Like the sun, you have nothing to show. Zip. Nothing to show. And as a Christian, born again by the word and blood of Jesus, you appear before him zero? I don't want to be near you. I don't want to be anywhere near the blast radius near you. If, if, you, if you don't serve Jesus Christ, you will serve self. You will work hard every morning. You'll work hard every day for meaningless things. Meaningless things. You know, you own so many things. You work hard to own so many things. Let me ask you, a hundred years from now, who will own your homes? Who will own your land a hundred years from now? It's a simple question and simple answer, folks. The answer is not you. Who will own that Ferrari that you got 100 years from now? The answer is not you. And you'll take nothing with you to heaven. Nothing. Think about it. That is wisdom. Be about God's business. Be about the Father's business. Serve Him. 
whatever capacity he has given you, whatever the skill set he has given you, serve him. Don't live in vain. Don't live in vain. We talked about last week the differences between a meaningful life and a good life. A meaningful life is spiritual and is measured by one's service to the Lord, powered by the Holy Spirit. A good life is measured by one's worldly achievements and possessions, powered by money. You don't want that. I mean, not, this is nothing against a good life, but that is not, it should not be your goal. Here's another circuit for you. Here's another circuit. The wind. So now we look at the sun. Look at the wind. The wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually and the wind returneth again according to his what? Circuit. There is a circuit for the wind as there is a circuit for the sun as there is a circuit for human life. The wind is also locked in its circuit that it cannot get out of. It starts up north. It goes down south. And then it turns and go back, returns to the north again. That is the circuit that it runs. Every season, it runs the same circuit. And the wind says, I'm tired of doing this. I want to get out of this. No can. You're going to repeat that perpetually, forever. Everything is locked in the circuit. Tell me there's no God. This is no randomness in there. The wind is locked in its own circuit. You know, going south, go south is not a good thing, right? The wind goes south. And not only that, it's also restless. It is so restless. Just like the human life is so restless. Every morning you come, you wake up, you work so hard for meaningless things. So restless. The wind is rest. It whirleth about continually. And when it's all said and done, it comes to the south and it goes back to the north. Back to square one. Back to square one. No gain. It gains nothing from all that world. You know how powerful hurricanes are. You know how powerful tornadoes are. All those energy that the wind generates. If you could capture the, all that energy of winds in one day, you could power billions of homes in one day. But the next day, it has to redo all over again. All over again. You're not going to gain anything. You're not going to take anything away. Talk about rivers. Here's another circuit. Another circuit. All the rivers of the world... Where do they end up? They end up in the ocean. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. You know, the output rate of the Amazon River, the largest river in the world, the output rate of the Amazon River alone is 7.4 million cubic feet per second. So you can just imagine 7.4 million cubic feet. 7 million. 7 million. 7 million. Filling the ocean. How long has the rivers been doing that? Anybody's guess? How long? How long has it been all the rivers been trying to fill the ocean? Two days? Three days, 10 years, thousands of years, millions of years? Has the ocean 
become full? What happened? Oh, scientists will tell you, yeah, we have this hydrological cycle, evaporation, it becomes clouds and takes it back to the headwaters. Thank you, scientists, for the insights. All the rivers run into the sea, and that's just Amazon alone. Just the top five largest river in the world, the Congo River, 1.4 million cubic feet per second. The Gang Ganges River, 1.3 million cubic feet. Orinoco River, 1.3 million. Yangtze River, 1.1 million cubic feet per second. You sum up all the rivers, including Wailoa River. These rivers have been trying to fill the ocean for thousands, if not millions of years, yet the ocean is never full. Never full. That's a circuit. That's a circuit that these rivers can't get out of. The river said, I'm so tired of filling the ocean. That is vanity. It will never be full because it is vanity. I'm tired of doing that. I don't want to do it no more. No can. You're locked in. You are locked in. What benefit does it get? It has been pouring out into the ocean for thousands of years, yet no benefit. No benefit. And it starts all over again from the headwaters. All over, just like the sun going back to the east, just like the wind going back to the north, the rivers is going to go back, all the water is going to go back to the headwaters. You're not going to gain anything. You're not going to take anything with you. Listen to the words of wisdom. Ever heard of rivers of delight? Rivers of pleasure? Rivers of prosperity? Rivers of longevity? Rivers of serenity? Rivers of supremacy? Rivers of splendor, rivers of opulence. All those rivers have been trying to fill this ocean, and this ocean is never full. Rivers of drugs, rivers of alcohol, rivers of women. This ocean will never be full. No matter what you fill this ocean with, this is the ocean. And it will never be full without Jesus Christ. Wake up, people. Doesn't matter what kind of drugs you take, doesn't matter what kind of position you have, it will never be full. If only you can get these eight verses down, like I said, you will radically change. Radically change. You'll never be the same again. If you only have this simple wisdom. Try to fill the ocean. Go down to the beach and ask the Wailua River, how long have you been doing this? And it will tell you, I'm tired of doing this. Yet the ocean will always be trouble. It's a restless sea. Always restless. Can never be satisfied. And you know what? Humans chase after happiness, like the sun, from east to west, and come back to east, you are no closer to happiness. Zero, you're no closer to happiness. The wind, from north to south and back to north, you are no closer to happiness. The rivers, from the headwaters to the sea and back to the headwaters, you are no closer to happiness. You know the hamster in the wheel? Oh, the hamster works so hard, thinking, oh, this is so wonderful. 
Does the hamster go anywhere? Life on earth without Jesus, you are like a hamster in a wheel. No closer to happiness, doesn't matter what you do. No wonder you're depressed. You work so hard for meaningless things. You hope in the meaningless things. You spend a ton of times on anything but the Bible. No wonder you're depressed. Everything runs in its circuit. That's your takeaway today. And it, everything runs in its circuit that so it cannot get out of. No can. Life runs it. Sun, wind, rivers, locked in its own circuit. And happiness also has its circuit. It's locked in the circuit of obedience to God's words. What makes you think you can have it your way. Everything is locked in its circuit. Unless you are in the circuit, you obey the circuit. Otherwise, vanity of vanities is your deal under the sun. All right. Bible students, I'm going to have something for you. Pay attention. In verse 5, in verse 5, look at your verse 5 in your Bible again. Look at verse 5. Who is the Son? In verse 5, there is a pronoun. The Son is referred to as He. Okay, let's go back to verse 5. The sun also arises, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place. The pronoun for the sun is he. Who is the sun? The sun is the Lord Jesus. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 is not S-O-N, it's S-U-N, the sun of righteousness shall arise with healings in his wings. The Son, S U N, of righteousness. That is the Lord Jesus. Do you see the Lord Jesus in Scripture today? Yes or no? Do you see Jesus? It is with a he pronoun, and then there is a reference to his place where he arose. And that, if you look at Psalms chapter 19, that talks about creation. That is the tabernacle for the sun. Make no, make no mistake. That sun that the Bible talks about is the Lord Jesus. Amen? You guys are, oh, this is too wet. Who is the wind? Who is the wind? The wind is the Holy Spirit. The wind is the Holy Spirit of God. Read John chapter 3, the story of Nicodemus. The wind is the Holy Spirit. In verse 6 in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, he too has a pronoun, he. So now we have Jesus. We have Holy Spirit. In verse 1, the capital P preacher is also Jesus. How many times have you seen God so far? Three times. Capital P preacher, the sun, the wind. Let me ask you another question. Who is the water? Who is the water? The water is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. That is a reference to Jesus Christ. How many times Jesus appears in a short 
seven verses. Three times Jesus Christ appears already. One time Holy Spirit. And you missed him. You missed him. Because why? You don't know how to... You read your Bible looking for self. The Bible is the book of Jesus. He is on every page of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. He appears multiple times saying hello to you. Here's wisdom. You just missed it. The Son is Jesus Christ. The water is Jesus Christ. You got two part Jesus and one part Holy Spirit. Why? Because Ecclesiastes is a book that looks at the world horizontally. When you look at the world horizontally, what you have, two parts Jesus and one part Holy Spirit. 1 John 5, 8. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit and the water and the blood. Every time the sun sets, it is blood. It is red like blood. Reminding you the sacrifice that Jesus paid on the cross every day. Two parts Jesus, one part Holy Spirit. That is the Trinity on earth. The Trinity on earth. Don't miss it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You see Jesus in the book of Jesus. Oh, the joy that floods your soul. When you see Jesus in the book of Jesus. All the joy that floods your soul when you are depressed and you open your Bible and lo and behold, there is the Lord. There is the Lord. All your tears are now dry because there is the Lord. All your burdens now gone because there is the Lord and you see Him. You see Him. Just seven verses. Jesus appeared seven, uh, three times and the Holy Spirit one time. How can you miss them? What depression? The sun goes from east to west. The wind goes from north to to south and what do you get what do you get God painted a big cross over the sky that the solution to your vanity is the cross the solution to your vanity of vanities is the cross and you missed it the sun rises faithfully every day East to west, the winds come from north to south. There is a cross painted up there, and you missed it. Always remember God is worth being right with. Always remember. Not to add misery to misery. This life is miserable enough. And if you sin against God, on top of that, you want to live for self, you're adding misery to misery. Not smart. Don't mock God with your sin. Don't mock God with your apathy. God, the Bible says God is not mock. God is not mock. He will have the last word, believe me. He will have the last word. Teach your children. What God has given you, the sun, the wind, and the river, all those are free. You don't have to pay an entrance fee like you're going to Disneyland. All those are free stuff. Teach your children. Take your children down to the beach. Watch the sunrise. Watch the sunset. When it is windy, they talk about the wind. When... The river, talk about the river. Teach your children. Free stuff. And if you want to learn the Bible, 
Next Monday, we're going to begin a new class on how to rightly divide the word of truth. You all invited. Kapa'a Neighborhood Center, 6 o'clock every Monday. Uh, the commitment is seven weeks. So I hope to see you all there. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for putting yourself in scripture that we may see you, Lord. How, what a blessing. Who cares if it rains? Who cares? We are not depressed. We see Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, wow, stand up, if you will, and um, we will praise God in this last song.
Praise you once again, God, on this glorious day. Look at all this free water we're getting. Oh, God. Uh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Um, if you have a moment to stop and pray with someone, try to meet someone new and pray with them, and go in safety. In Jesus' name, amen.